Hi everyone, I'm Andy Neal and this is a motion quick tip. I thought I'd do this fun little tutorial on building a radar sweep. It's not very difficult and you can use some of these techniques on other kinds of graphics. I'm going to start by creating a new project. I like to use the HDV 720p 24 preset. The first thing I'm going to do is build the basic radar screen. I'll do this with a couple of replicators. Go up to the Shape Tool button in the toolbar, click and hold down to reveal all the shape tools. Choose the line. If your HUD isn't showing, hit F7 on your keyboard to bring it up. The HUD is the only place where you can adjust the width and color of your line before you actually draw it. Make the width a small number like 1 or 2, and for the color, let's, uh, let's try a green. Okay, let's draw. Start around the center of the canvas and draw to the edge of the frame like this to get your line. Hold the shift button down to vertically constrain the line. In the inspector, find the properties tab. Click the reset transformation button. That's this little curved arrow here on the right. This will move the layer to zero zero in the canvas. It's helpful to build things from the perspective of the center of the canvas when precision or symmetry is important with the, making the graphic. Click on the shape tab and go to the geometry section. This is where the position information is located for the individual points in your shape. For point one, change the Y position to zero. For point two, just drag in the value until the line goes off frame. It doesn't really matter how far. Click the replicate button in the toolbar or hit L on the keyboard. Now we have a bunch of lines, but I want them to radiate like spokes in a wheel. In the Replicator tab, change the replicator shape to a line, and then make the starting and ending points zero so that the lines are all going to come from a single point. Change the number of points to 8, and then the angle end parameter to 360 degrees so that the lines are spread evenly around in a circle. You can have more points if you want, or fewer if you think it looks better, but for right now, 8 looks about right for me. Now to make the circular hashes with another replicator. Go back up to the Shape Tool button, and this time, select the Circle Tool. In the HUD, uncheck the Fill button and check the Outline button. Again, start roughly from the center, and holding down Option and Shift, draw a circle. Holding the Option and Shift keys will constrain it to a perfect circle, and also make sure that it draws from the center out. Go ahead and draw it fairly big. Go to the Properties tab in the Inspector and reset the transformation for the circle. Then grab the Scale parameter and scale the circle until it just about fills the top and bottom of the frame. Hit L on the keyboard to replicate it. This is actually a pretty cool look, but it's not what I'm looking for now, so we need to make some changes. In the Replicator tab, change the shape once again to a line and make the start and end points zero. Then go down to the Scale End parameter and drag the value down. This will make each successive circle in the replicator a little smaller, but the distance between each circle will stay even. Replicators are a great way to build graphics that have a lot of symmetry in them. Now, the spokes in your radar screen might be poking out past the edge of the largest circle, so we'll fix that with a mask. And instead of drawing the mask, I'll use the shape that we've already drawn. Select the circle layer in the Layers pane and duplicate it by hitting Command D on the keyboard. Rename this layer Mask Shape. In the Shape tab, uncheck the Outline button and check the fill. Don't worry about the color, it doesn't matter since we're using it as a mask. Select the group that contains all of these layers and go to Object, Add Image Mask from the menu. Drag the Mask Shape layer on top of the Image Mask layer and voila! everything looks good. The next thing to do is to make the radar sweep. That's the line that goes around and around and reveals the blips on the radar. To do this, I'm going to need to start a new group. So let's label the group that we've already got. Call it Screen. Hit the plus sign in the Layers pane to create a new group and label this one Sweep. Now I could draw my sweep line, but then again, I already have. The first line I drew is exactly the size and shape that I need. Select that line layer and duplicate it with Command D. Drag it into the sweep group and label it sweep line. 
And don't forget to turn it on. I can't really see this new line, so I'm going to make it a little bigger first off. Go to the Shape tab and change the width to about 10. I'd also like it to glow, and there's a simple way to accomplish that. Change the brush type to Airbrush. You see, airbrush lines are different from solid lines in that they're created with dabs, which are essentially soft circles arranged close together to make the line. This allows airbrush lines to have variable thickness and things like that. It also gives you the ability to additively blend the dabs together. You do this by checking the additive blend button, which is going to create a glow. If the color you're getting is a little bit more of a white or a blue than a green, you can fix that by just adjusting the color. Just drag down on the brightness slider until the result is something that you like. Click on the stroke button. Find the width over stroke and twirl it open. This shows off a graph with two points on it. Making adjustments to this graph changes the length of the line dynamically. Grab the second point and drag upwards to see how it makes the end of the line wider than the beginning. Don't make it too wide, but definitely create some thickness. If you want to make the starting point of the line smaller, you can do that as well. To start the line spinning, we're going to apply a behavior. Select the Sweep group and go to the Properties tab in the Inspector. Right-click the Rotation. This brings up the Parameter Behaviors menu. Choose Ramp. Go to the end of your project in the Mini Timeline. In the Behaviors tab, drag the end value until the sweep has made three revolutions. Hold shift down while dragging if you want to adjust it by larger values. When you get to the third revolution, stop just shy of straight up and down. That way, when it plays through the end and goes back to the beginning, it'll loop seamlessly. Give it a shot and see how it looks. Okay. It'd be nice if I could have a little light trail following this sweep. I'm going to create that by using another replicator. Start by duplicating the line with Command D. Name this new line trail line to keep it separate from our sweep line. Hit L on the keyboard to replicate it. Label this replicator trail. As we did before, change the shape to a line and make it a point by zeroing out the start and end positions. Then grab the end angle parameter and change the value to around negative 200. Finally, crank up the points until it fills in and looks like a solid shape. Well, this is a good start, but it should look like a fading after image, not like some large glowing Pac-Man. It's also way too opaque, but let's fix the glow first. Select the trail line and go to the Shape tab in the Inspector. Click on the Style button and uncheck the Additive Blend. Notice that when we do that, our replicator updates. Now, reselect the Trail Replicator, and in the Replicators tab, scroll down towards the bottom to find the Opacity Gradient. It's just below the Color Mode. This controls the opacity of each individual replicated line over the length of the pattern. Click the white box and adjust the opacity to about, I don't know, 30%. Then, let's add a second Opacity tag by just clicking anywhere in the bar. Set this one to zero opacity, and then drag it over to the other end. Now it's kind of fading out. I like I like actually like how it's fading out, but it still feels a little too bright. I can't adjust the opacity gradient anymore though, because if I do, it'll start to eat away at the entire trail. I like the length of the trail that we got. I just want it to be less obvious. Also, there's a bit of a bloom at the center where the lines tend to overlap more than they do at the edges. To fix the bloom, Select the trail line and then go to the Stroke tab. Twirl down the Opacity over Stroke. Click in the bar to create a second Opacity tag and place it on the right side away from the first one. Then click on the first one and lower the Opacity to zero. Now grab this little triangle and slide it back to the left until there's green all the way back in the center. Select the Replicator and go to the Properties tab. Now we're going to lower the opacity of this whole replicator to around 60% to uh, make that trail a little less obvious. Okay, that looks great. One last thing. Our, our original sweep line is at the bottom of our group, which isn't helping its glow. Select the sweep line and move it to the top of the sweep group. 
There's actually a great shortcut for this. If you hold down the command key and hit the right bracket, you can move a layer up in the layers pane. And if you hit the left bracket, it'll move that layer down. I find this is much easier than just trying to drag it with the mouse because I'm always accidentally dragging layers out of groups and into groups and it's just it's really annoying. So I tend to use the shortcut instead. Once the sweep line is back on top, play it a bit to see how it looks. Okay, so now we just need something to track on our radar. Select the screen group and click the new group button. This will create a new group above the screen group but below the sweep group. Label it blip. Turn off the sweep and screen groups as well so that we can build our graphic without any distractions. Start by creating a small circle. Grab the circle tool or hit C on the keyboard. Make sure your HUD is up and that the fill is checked and the outline is unchecked. Don't worry about the color. Hold down the shift key when you click and drag so that you can create a perfect circle. Don't make it that big. In the properties tab, click the reset transformation button to center it into canvas. Go back to your HUD and uncheck the fill and recheck the outline. Change the color back to white and then make another circle about three to four times larger than your first one. In the properties tab, reset its transformation as well. Feel free to adjust the width of the outline. I think I'm going to go with about maybe four. Go back to the toolbar and grab the Bezier shape tool. That's this here. Click once on the center dot to set a control point and then click out here and then off to the side like this. Click and drag to align that last point so that it looks like what you've got is an underscore. You can use snapping if you want or just eyeball it like I'm doing. When you're done, hit the return key on your keyboard. Now we can add some text if you like, an identifier for our airplane or UFO or whatever it is I'm making. Grab the text tool and click above the line to type your text. I'm just going to type in a fake ID number here. Hit escape when you're done and then adjust your font size and the font type in the inspector. For font type, I kind of like Futura. And for the typeface, I think I'm going to go with medium condensed. Drop the size a bit and maybe add another piece of text below the line. Just duplicate the text layer with Command D and drag it below the line. Then double click inside the text field to replace it with something new. If you have to adjust the size, go ahead and do it. Don't worry about readability because it's really just there to be sort of techno babble on the screen. Turn on your sweep and screen layers again. Select the blip group and in the properties tab, scale it down so that it looks like it fits in our graphic. The reason I didn't color the blip shape green was so that I could leave myself the option of using a different color if I wanted. In fact, I may want to use more of a yellow color for this blip. With the blip group selected, go to Add Filter, Color Correction, Colorize. In the Filters tab, change the Remap White to a yellow. Despite the change in color, the blip is still getting a little bit lost underneath the sweep. I can fix that a bit by selecting the trail replicator and changing its blend mode in the properties tab to add. That looks a little bit better. One last thing we can do to enhance our blip. Select a layer called circle 2. I didn't name it but this is the outer circle in my graphic. Duplicate it. Let's go ahead and label the duplicate. Call it blink. In the shape tab of the blink layer Uncheck the outline and check the fill. I want this blip to be blinking in time with the turn of my radar sweep. Right click on the fill opacity parameter and choose oscillate from the menu. The oscillate behavior can create sort of a blinking animation without the need for keyframes. It's actually a pretty awesome behavior if you've never had a chance to use it before. In the behaviors tab, change the wave shape to sawtooth. To see what it's doing, hit Command-8 on the keyboard to open the keyframe editor. As you can see, I have an animated opacity line that's kind of in the shape of a sawtooth, but it needs some work to get the way I want.
First of all, half of the wave is being cut off because the behavior uses the starting value for a parameter and then it oscillates above it and below it. Now, we started with a value of 100% opacity and since you can't go higher than that, the animation is only about half there. In the Shape tab, drop the fill opacity to 50%. Then, back in the Behaviors tab, change the amplitude to 50. That's the shape I'm looking for, but it's playing in the wrong direction. It's doing a slow fade in instead of a slow fade out. To fix that, change the amplitude to negative 50%. Go to the beginning of the project. To time the blink to the sweep movement, adjust the phase so that the point of the wave is at the beginning of the project. Hold down the Option key to move it in small increments so that you can adjust it exactly. Scrub forward in the timeline to where the sweep line is again at the top of the radar. Now adjust the speed parameter until the next wave point is at the playhead position. Play through to check and make sure that it works. Perfect. Now, if you want to add even more blips, you can accomplish that with another replicator. Stop playback and twirl up the blip group. Then hit L on the keyboard to replicate the entire group. Drag the corner of the replicator shape to make it big enough to cover the entire radar and kind of reposition it so that it's right there in the center. Go to the replicator tab in the inspector and change the arrangement from tile to random. Add a few more blips to the scene. If you don't like the random arrangement you're getting, just click this random generator button to get a new look. In fact, you can just keep clicking until you're happy. Now, to clean up the graphic, twirl up the new replicator group and all the other groups. Select them all in the layers pane and right click. Choose group from the menu to place all of these groups into a single group. Then twirl open the screen group. Here's that image mask that we use to crop our radar spokes. Now that we've grouped everything together we can use this same image mask to mask everything. Drag the image mask off of the screen group and drop it into our new master group. And there you go, a fully functional radar graphic. I'm Andy Neal, and this has been a Motion Quick Tip.